Hello, welcome to the channel. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to take you through my Necromunda's own Mortalis terrain, what I've done for my personal board, and kind of why, really. So this set you see in here is the completed uh, version using a TT Combat MDF terrain kit uh, from their Iron Labyrinth range, I think it's called. Um, so this set I've used, so why? Well, I've sort of costed it out when I wanted to do a Zone Mortalis set. I wanted to do pure Zone Mortalis, not with the big high buildings and things. So I've got that for other terrain boards that I've done. Using the Games Workshop plastic kits, it would have been about 300 quid for me to fill this 3x3 three three that I wanted to do. Um, whereas the TT Combat version, it's about 60 quid for the pieces I'm using. So definite cost saving. Also, I fancy doing some terrain. I quite enjoy it. Look, if you don't enjoy making terrain, uh, doing some of the steps I'm going to show you through here, you, you know, you might not enjoy. You might just want to go for the Games Workshop plastic kit, spray them up, whatever. You could just spray this kit up without doing the steps that I'm going to show you. Um, and obviously you'd still save money but the building stages take a lot longer than plastic kits so that's the kind of trade-off spending a lot less so this kit you see in here is a white box kit a tt combat do these kind of every christmas and it's an extra value way of getting their stuff you can see a lot of packs of stuff in here as well as some little bits of scatter terrain which is what's in the little plastic bag if you don't want to use the white boxes or you can't wait till christmas kind of thing the sets that i'm using from here are available separately works out about 60 quid uh, and again in this white box there's about a quarter of it that i don't even use now when you get a tt combat set you've got to download the instructions onto a tablet or phone or whatever um, and again that's just the way obviously they must save you know their money so starting off and this is what i'm showing now is what they call a death quadrant complex which is like 25 quid in its own there's two of these in the set and some walls and some high walls and doors and things that i'll show you building later I'm just going to show you through a building of one of the longer walls. So a few tips when you're building MDF terrain. PVA glue is your friend. That's what you're going to glue it together with. Uh, have a craft knife and have some sort of clippery devices. And you can see there a useful thing to do is a coin. Just something metal to push the pieces out where there's little struts that will hold them in. And if you have something metal to push onto them, it'll just pop it out without damaging the set. If you push in the middle of a piece, and just shove it out, chances of damage. Now you see here, I did the first one with the coin and then thought, you know what, this is Necromunda terrain. If I damage the odd bit, it doesn't matter um, because we're going for a damaged effect in the end anyway. To be fair, I didn't damage too much by pushing them out, two or three pieces in this whole kit. So just put bear that in mind if you are just gonna push them out. So PVA glue to put them together, quite simple and easy. You do have to leave these as drying time in between. You can't just start doing something with them as soon as you stuck it together. It does need to dry and that's one of the drawbacks of PVA, I suppose. I was doing scenery sessions on a Sunday morning. You know, my body clock gets me up at five, no matter what day of the week it is, whether I'm at work or not. So it gives me a few hours in the morning just to get some scenery done. And this was over a course of a few weeks. So I would build something. It would dry before the next step on the next weekend. So just kind of space that out like that if you're doing this. And when you're batch building, you know, it's an easy thing to let them dry. So about 10 minutes to build this first wall took me to give you a guide of where we're at. But the more I built, the faster I would get because, you know, there's a common theme about how they assemble these pieces. So a bit more practice, you will speed up um, and, you know, bear that in mind when you're building it. This isn't quick. To put together a plastic Zone Mortalis wall from Games Workshop, for example, takes me three to five minutes. So you're talking probably twice as long to assemble this stuff as you are than going plastic. But it has the advantages of the cost, as we said before. And some of the personalization that we're going to take you through at the end so that's a finished long wall piece just as our first um, sort of shot quite a nice little piece fits in exactly with the same sizing as the games workshop long wall pieces but we're going to do something next with it now I think to bear in mind when you're building these as well as the instructions if you saw on there it said there were four of these doors in this first kit there very much weren't there was two so the instructions are liable to a few mistakes but a lot of modeling companies instructions are so you know you can't hold that to them so this is the contents of the first of the 25 pound death quadrant complexes lots and lots of wood there spare and you can see there there's a lot of pieces in this individual pack that i'm not using because you get some walkways some ladders those kind of things and i'll save them for another project but what we do get is we get 11 of the columns we get four of the big walls a big gate two small gates and four so little side doors so quite good value Another thing to bear in mind, this is off the um, gateway kit. You get two of these large gateways, but they don't quite fit right. And that's some of the little foibles you'll find with the MDF terrain. The tolerances are nowhere near as good as a plastic kit. But taking a hobby knife there, just thinning out the bottom tab, and all of a sudden it'll then slot in and move quite freely. So bear that in mind when you're going through. You do have to do some adaptation to these kits because they won't necessarily be perfect. Okay, so the columns. 
Um, the columns have got like a little crosses at the top and the bottom and there's meant to be like a little insert that goes in the top so that you can then stack these columns during the game. Now what I'm doing here will still let you stack them but it doesn't lock them together. Now as long as you're relatively careful when you're playing I haven't found it a problem standing them on top without these pins but I want to do some interesting texture and stuff on the top so I'm filling it in just with a bit of milli put so I've mixed up the milli put not really left it to dry for that long because we're only filling gaps I would normally leave milli put to dry so it's easier to work with but it doesn't matter it's a little bit sticky we are only filling gaps stuff a little bit in the top cut it down to not want to waste too much then I'm just using a, a brush pushing through the bottom to you know make sure I'm minimizing the use and pushing back through now this step we're going to do on the top of all the pillars and all the walls what we'll be doing is covering up where all the join marks are on the MDF and also starting to give this floor effect so milliput's been mixed up now this has been left for a while it's only 10-15 minutes or so because I'm putting a thin layer of about a mil across the tops of all of these onto the piece that's already dried that we showed earlier now it's actually been left between weeks so you know absolutely fine but if you're going to do it straight after a session, if you're only doing a few, just let that insert piece that you're using the filler dry before you put this on. So about a millimetre thickness of uh, milliput. It's now probably been on this pillar for 25 minutes, half an hour before we roll it in because I did a batch. Wet the milliput that's on the top. Wet the Green Stuff World Roller, the mesh one that we're using. Use any type if you like. And just roll it across the top and it'll pick up that texture. Now you did see there on the roller, some stuff did get stuck in slightly into the roller, but that's always going to happen. But the longer you leave it, the less that will happen. You can also use other things to put texture in there, like some mesh or whatever, but the rollers I just think are fantastic, very time-saving, very good. Now what we're doing is battle damaging this terrain. Taking a hobby knife and I've just carved out some pieces, uh, random around the terrain, just to look like sort of severe battle damage. Now using a pin drill with a small uh, drill bit that you would use for drilling out your bolt guns or your whatever, and just drilling in some shot damage. At random patches on the terrain you can use your hobby knife to widen those out as well if you wish and then the final stage i've got a, a fake fake dremel it is from little i think it's about 18 quid um you could just use sandpaper for this stage but i'm taking off the corners you know the sharp corners of this mdf terrain because this is twenty thousand years old this hive so we're just putting some damage in there so that it doesn't look like fresh clean brand new and you can see they're just scrubbing off some of the line marks where the hazard marking is going to go just to add some sort of ambiance in terms of it doesn't look pristine and clean i did paint up a pillar that was pristine didn't look anywhere near as good as putting the damage on so you can see here just showing some examples of the damage we've put on these uh, pieces some bullet holes and some scuffs and whatever um a little bit around the gateways and just showing you what we've done in different places and you can do as much or as little of this damage as you want okay now some simple things to do the next stage some sand a bit of bandage from you know bound to be a first aid kit knocking around your house somewhere a little bit of barbed wire that is actually from a kit that you buy to upgrade then some sprues because we're going to do two things with it one we're going to make like metal beams by using the pieces of the sprue that have got no you know no wording or whatever on secondly we're going to take some bits because there's always going to be bits left over when you build your neck from under kits because lots of spaces and put them on the terrain now putting it on is very really easy sand that easy put some pva down sprinkle the sand on the bandage is exactly the same as well cut out a small piece dip it in the pva glue and stick it onto the model and that's going to represent bits of tarpaulin bits of cloth that's been knocking around use some super glue for the um, barbed wire and then you can see there the, the pieces of sprue that we've used to represent sort of stanchions and things that have fallen down and then we've glued on pieces from those model kits whether that be you know a pack a pouch um, some cabling to represent it it just adds a little bit of visual difference now you could go crazy and put loads and loads and loads on um, but i've kept it fairly minimal just to sort of represent what's going on in the underhive i've also made sure to leave a load of the tops completely clear so that you can stack if you wish later on this scenery and also it helps put put it away in a box when you're going to go store it in the garage or whatever if they've all got stuff on the top it makes it difficult to store but also you're going to damage it and hard to stack so now it comes the painting stage sprayed these black and then i've done a lead belcher coat over the top of that two reasons um the silver will show through really really nicely if you just batter through and if you miss bits it's going to show through a silver which is great and the reason i've done the two layers is i just i want this to be fairly robust and i, I think with mdf terrain first coat of black it does kind of soak in a little bit so putting a second layer of a different color on just seems to me to hold it nicer so those are kind of reasons why 
And you can see here when I'm laying the first color down, I've just gone for a blue, personal choice, whatever you like. Um, when you're laying it down, we are not trying to cover every last inch of this terrain. So I'm just using a fat um, dry brush, stippling it on. And if I miss bits, it doesn't matter. And actually that's the effect we want. We want the worn battered underhive. Now something I particularly like about TT Combat Terrain is they build in or, or burn on, however you want to call it, a lot of the hazard markings and hazard stripes and things for you. You've got some line guides, makes your life a lot easier than doing it manually. And obviously, as we know, the 41st millennium might be dangerous, but we don't want our people dying accidentally, so we keep our healthy <laughs> health and safety stripes everywhere. So real simple, just going through with the black and the yellow on these. And again, we want to be fairly neat and tidy. We don't want to have the yellow paint and the black paint merging across the lines with each other. But again, if we miss bits, it doesn't matter as long as it's the silver we're leaving showing through. I'm being careful here to cover any you know blue over that I've um, missed or gone over. But if I leave patches of silver showing through, it just adds to that worn effect. Now, add in some um, sort of brass colour onto here. Now, when you look here, I'm doing quite a lot of painting onto each column and section you know we're putting a bit of effort in but i think that's really important particularly with a game like necromunda in a game like 40k or bolt action or whatever where you've got a lot of models on the table i wouldn't necessarily go to this length on every single piece of terrain in necromunda however you're not using very, very models so the terrain almost becomes like part of your gang and it's well worth spending the time to to paint these now each mon probably and you accumulate have to up as an hour or so of work put onto it and that's absolutely fine. You're treating it like a model. When all said and done, although this is cheaper than plastic terrain, you still spent 70 quid in it. It's worth the effort and really brings your games of Necromon to life. I think you can get away with it in big games of 40k because the scenery is kind of background, whereas the scenery in Necromon comes to the forefront. So as you've seen before, I've gone around with a silver colour. Even though we sprayed it silver and we've let quite a lot of that silver show through the top layer of paint, I've gone around and put some extra silver onto the bullet marks onto some of the hash markings and some areas where I really want to have multi-tones of silver so that when we've done that ink stage you've seen there that's just a sepia ink wash we've sepia inked over all this you'll get two or three different tones of metal which is great you know it starts building up that pattern of age that we're going for so we've let the sepia ink wash dry uh, that is a Vallejo sepia ink mostly because it's my favorite ink wash uh, through the CPU, but any dirty kind of coloured wash would do. The layer stuff comes in bigger pots though for me, about 200 mil pot, and I used way less than a quarter, so definitely a value for money thing. But any CPU wash would do. You want it to be a mucky coloured wash, so you could use Agrax Earth Shade, Seraphim CPU, if you're using the Games Workshop stuff, loads of options. So we've gone back over with the blue, but not covering all the areas, just adding a sort of semi highlight layer. Now, this is the only time we're going to use a different color than we used in my base step. So, I'm taking a lighter blue, mostly because the blue is the biggest color on the model, and I wanted three or four tones to show the Asian environment. And you can see there we've got um, the darker area where the wash has stayed on the blue, the next layer up with the original blue that we've used, and then a little highlight layer on there. And that's the only section I really used anything other than the basic paints. So the beauty of putting a wash on is it takes the colours down and then when you use the original colour it looks like a highlight layer, it looks like you put the effort in. And now we're just going through with the other colours we've used, so the yellow, the black, and just touching up any sections we want to try and give, again, multi-layer effect. So why, I suppose, take the effort? I said it before, definitely worth it. These are really going to stand out, uh, they're going to look nice and make your models um, look a lot nicer as well and really kind of hopefully help your terrain and things pop. Now when I'm going on the silver again you can see I am going to the areas where I painted extra silver on but if you miss sections again it doesn't matter because where I've painted now I've not necessarily gone on to every last bit I've done before. If you miss a bullet hole for example now well then it's going to look like a really old bullet mark on there and then you'll have a fresher one uh, on another section so the beauty of I suppose painting Necromunda and 40k is you're going for grim dark so you miss a few bits doesn't overly matter now this is the main reason I wanted to get after the MDF terrain as opposed to using the plastic so I'm painting the top there you can see and I'm just dry brushing up that silver piece and then we do the muck and that matches exactly what I've done for my gang I didn't use my um, any of my Necromunda models on the official workshop basis I used my own Use the green stuff world roller to make them unique but then i used every single gang with the same basing technique and i've done the same techniques in terms of how i've done the tops of these models 
as I've done my gang. So hopefully it shows they're all fighting kind of the same part of the underhive showing there and really kind of makes a cohesive collection. Looks good in the cabinet if you do that, but also looks good when you're playing on the table. So here's some finished pieces in terms of the, the painting stage we've done. You can see the damage we've got on there. You can see all the multi-tones. Um, and I think it's looking really, really nice. What we're gonna do now is take it to the next stage. Um, just a point to make on the doors here. I have put more battle damage around the doorways because I figured you're gonna fight for control of a dome. Where's most of the fighting gonna take place? Sort of at the gateways, doorways, access ways into those areas of the underhive that you're trying to take control of. So you don't have to follow that method, but that's just, I thought that seemed quite appropriate for background. Okay, so the final stage of the models. Now these are some fantastic um, posters that are available online. It's a guy on Instagram, if you track him down, called Carl R. Johnston. Um, calls himself Underhive Art on Facebook and things as well. If you Google Underhive Art, you will come up with them. Now these are done as a free downloadable resource that you can print out yourself. But you can chuck him a Ko-Fi coffee thing, whatever it's called, just donate to him, which I did, because these are cracking value. Um, I just donated a fiver, because I think that's what the coffee thing asks. And you can print them as many times as you like. So look, well, well worth it. I did find, print it on cheap paper, though, because expensive paper's got threads in that look weird if you use that, because they stick out cheap paper once you've printed them leave them to dry for a few hours because if the ink's still wet it will run um, obviously when you do this PVA step so all we're doing here is PVA glue on the back of the poster lift it up stick it on the area of terrain you want a bit of a tip if you've messed up any painting anywhere you can use a poster to cover it uh, and then a little layer of PVA over the top of the poster just to seal it down um, onto the terrain and you see he does different types so this is a nice clean enforcer one where some of the posters are quite mucky so um, some nice options you can do now the only thing now i'm doing for the rest of this terrain because this is effectively done is leave the pva glue to dry for a few hours and then i'd get a blast of matte varnish over the top just to really protect it as we're going and the last thing to talk about actually i've done is you see the terrain's locked together there are these little kind of l-shaped hooks in the walls that hook into the pillars. I did cut the bottom part of that off because although I want to hook them together, I don't want them really firmly secure because it might sort of scrape um, paint off or anything. So um, that's the only other thing I did. And you see here, this is the finished board. Look, I hope you've enjoyed my ramblings through what I've done with my terrain. I hope you might have picked up some hints and tips, or if not, I hope you've just uh, enjoyed seeing uh, kind of what I'm doing on the Necrom Underboard. I've had a couple of games on this already. Definitely makes it more immersive, much more fun than playing on a board that's just, you know, plain uh, wood. Um, and I'm really looking forward to using this again and I will be doing some scatter terrain and some of those things as well to sort of enhance the rest of the board which I'm sure I'll stick on the channel as well so if you've liked that um, like comment subscribe all that YouTube jazz track me down on Instagram it's Adam's Hobby Stuff and I've also got a Facebook page as well so hopefully I'll see you again next time